So today we're going to continue on and finish up this Lewis dot structure stuff, including uh, something called formal charges and what we use formal charges for. So I just want to review or go over how to do Lewis dot structures. These directions of how to draw Lewis doctors, dot structures come from the textbook. Actually, it's probably better if I to show you all these uh, directions first. Okay, so. Um, we first draw skeleton structure or compound showing what atoms are bonded to each other, put the least electronegative element in the center. So remember how I said, I don't know if you remember before, I, um, when we did Lewis dot structures, I just kind of said, well, it's kind of the first element that's written um, that's not hydrogen that goes in the center. Well, that usually uh, that does work. The technical rule is the least electronegative element goes in the center. Reminder, electronegativity increases up and to the right on the periodic table from earlier in the notes. So the periodic table trends of electronegativity increases up and to the right on the periodic table. So the technical rule is the least electronegative element that goes in the center. But as we also write the chemical formula, say carbon oxide, CO2, carb, um, carbon is actually less electronegative than oxygen, which is why carbon in carbon oxide, it goes in the center when we draw Lewis up structure. And so carbon and carbon dioxide go in the center, surrounded by oxygen. Then we count the total number of valence electrons by looking at a periodic table. What group is it in is how many dots. This is, I didn't mention this before, but you saw this in some other videos. You add one dot for every negative charge and subtract one dot for every positive charge. Uh, we'll see an example of that in a second, but, uh, or in a couple of minutes. But if it's a negatively charged ion, um, let's say it's a negative two charge ion, we, rem we add two dots. Negative, we add dots. If it's negative two, two, we add two dots total to the whole molecule. And if it's positive, we subtract a dot for every positive charge. So if it's a plus two ion, then we remove two dots. Which two? Just pick two. I'll, again, I'll show you an example a little later. But remove two dots. Complete octet rule for all atoms, uh, which is eight atoms. Octet is eight, except hydrogen, hydrogen helium, technically. Uh, they only need two. If structure contains too many electrons, form double and triple bonds to the center atom as needed. Okay, so let's look at this one. If we're trying to draw the Lewis dot, and Lewis dot structure of nitrogen trifluoride. Uh, well, first of all, you need to see what element goes in the center. The center element is the technical term, the least electronegative element in the center, or when it's written like this NF3, the first element that's written that's not hydrogen. So H2O, not hydrogen in water, okay, H2O. Uh, it'll be the oxygen. So this case is going to be nitrogen that's going to go in the center, surrounded by three fluorine. Nitrogen is a less electronegative, and it's going to be surrounded by three fluorines. Okay, uh, the rest of the notes comes from the textbook, so I just prefer to do this on paper. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Let's do this on paper. Um, so nitrogen goes in the center surrounded by three fluorines. Uh, nitrogen is a group five element. Fluorine is a group seven element. I'll put five dots around each nitrogen. One, two, three, four, five around each nitrogen. Fluorine is group seven, seven dots around each, uh, seven dots around each fluorine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm just using different colors, but it's just so it's easier to see, but obviously you wouldn't necessarily do it like this. Okay, so seven dots around each fluorine. They're gonna share atoms. Uh, so they're gonna share uh, atoms, so everything has eight except hydrogen or helium. And not, there's neither hydrogen or helium here, so I don't have to worry about that. But if we're to share that pair, this pair, and that pair of electrons with the fluorine, Fluorine on the left, about 2, 4, 6, 8. Fluorine on the bottom, 2, 4, 6, 8. Fluorine on the right, 2, 4, 6, 8. Nitrogen in the middle, 2, 4, 6, 8. Everything has eight valence electrons, like the octet rule says. So the Lewis dot structure would be nitrogen, single bond with fluorine, because one pair of electron is a line. One pair means two electrons. Fill in the lone pairs of electrons, the unshared pairs of electrons. And this would be the Lewis dot structure of nitrogen trifluoride, NF3. Everything has eight valence electrons. So it just looked like that, basically. Okay, that has eight, uh, well, the one that's circled 
has eight, they all have eight valence electrons. Right? Every line is two electrons. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, let's look at another one. Oh, so it has eight. Okay, every single one of them has eight. Okay, um, you, you can see the notes, you can pause here, but pretty much everything has eight. This is the textbook's way of doing it. I'm just not going to do it that way. I prefer just sharing electrons, play around with it till everything has eight. That's the main thing. Let's look at another one. Carbonate ion. Draw the Lewis structure carbonate ion, CO3, 2 minus. I want to get to that minus 2 thing. Okay? Minus 2. What do I do for minus 2? Going back in the notes. There it is. We add one dot for every negative charge. We add, so we add one dot for every negative charge. So for carbonate ion, which is CO3, 2 minus, we're going to add two dots total to the entire molecule. Uh, first of all, which goes in the center, carbon or oxygen? Well, the least electronegative element, which is carbon. Again, electronegativity, I don't have a periodic table in front of me, but electronegativity increases up and to the right, and oxygen is further to the right than carbon is on a periodic table. So carbon would go in the center. Carbon would go in the center surrounded by three oxygens. I'm going to do that on paper. So I have it here. So carbon goes in the center surrounded by three oxygens. Okay, now, carbon is a group four element. Oxygen is a group two element. Uh, let's just put one, two, three, four. And oxygen is, well, I said oxygen is group six element. I said two. Oxygen is group six element. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One other thing about this molecule, it's a minus two charge, this molecule. 2 minus. So I'm going to add two dots anywhere in the molecule I want. Uh, I'm going to put it, uh, I'm going to put it right here because I felt like it. So minus 2 means you could put two dots anywhere in the molecule. I'm putting it right there in purple. Okay, so it looks blackish to me there, but that's fine. Uh, so that's two extra dots total. Now, if they were to share this pair, this pair and that pair is a coordinate covalent bond, meaning they both come from one. It doesn't matter where they come from. Oxygen 2468, oxygen 2468, 2468 for every oxygen. However, carbon will only have 246, and not enough electrons. So what does it got to do? Make a double bond. Double bond with one of the oxygens. We're going to do it with just one of the oxygens because, well, you'll see, I'm going to move those two blue dots right there. Notice I didn't add dots. I just kind of moved it to make a double bond. So oxygen still has 2, 4, 6, 8, but now carbon has 2, 4, 6, 8. So on one side or one oxygen, I have a double bond. And on the other two oxygens, I have single bonds, meaning, oh, my PowerPoint stopped. Okay, carbon on one side, I have a double bond. On another side, I have single bonds. Fill in the unshared electrons. Fill in the unshared electrons like this, and here would be my Lewis Sop structure. Oh, to say that I added two extra dots, most of the time we put a bracket around this whole thing and put a minus two above it. Okay, and then that, that box is supposed to be saying that's the answer, but I guess I didn't need it. So uh, a bracket around the whole molecule, Lewis Sop structure, and put a two minus that represents the two extra electrons. Okay, let's see if I can get this PowerPoint restart and pause for a second. Okay, sorry, continuing on with this. So the Lewis Sot structure of the molecule will look like this. Carbon, okay, in this picture, double bonds on the right oxygen. I had mine on the left. Oxygen doesn't really matter. There's a term for that, though. It's called resonance. So if you have double bond on one, single bond on another, that's just called resonance structure, so which is coming up in the notes anyways, but just pointing it out. Uh, so carbon do double bond with one oxygen, single bond with the rest. Okay, so... Uh, I'm going to pause for one second. Okay, so continuing, continuing on, uh, if I was trying to draw the Lewis Sot structure from out of height, CH2O, there's two different ways we can do it. First of all, carbon we know is the least electronegative. We put carbon here surrounded by hydrogen, uh, oxygen, hydrogen like this, or carbon in the center surrounded by hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen like this. Now, which one is the correct one? Okay. Um, there is a better Lewis Sot structure for these two. Either this way, you can call it A or B. 
One of them is what forms in nature. And to figure that out, uh, we have to know something called formal charges. And so I'm going to define it first. And it seems like actually quite a complicated definition. And here it is. Uh, but I'm going to summarize that and make it something into much shorter. Okay. So I'll read it first. It says an atom's formal charge is the difference between a number of valence electrons in an isolated atom and a number of electrons assigned to the atom in a Lewis structure. It seems complicated, but it's actually not that hard. Let me read this to you, and it still seems complicated, and I'll just kind of summarize it in my own kind of words. So formal charge of an atom in a Lewis structure is equal to the total charge of valence electrons in a free atom minus the number of non-bonding electrons minus half times the number of bonding electrons. Now, it's like, okay, and, also, and the sum of the formal charge of the atoms in a molecule must equal to the charge of the molecule or ion. Okay, so this is a complicated uh, definition. I'm going to summarize it using a different definition. Okay, as I said, I was going to use a simpler definition for it. So formal charge, I'm gonna write it somewhat differently. And uh, let's see, where does this show up? Formal charge. Yeah. Formal charge of an atom in a molecule is equal to and this. This is my kind of definition: is what group the element is is in minus how many dots are on that element minus how many lines. And I'll explain how that's really the same as this definition. Because I said formal charge of atoms is equal to group minus dots minus lines. Group minus dots minus lines. Formal charge is equal to group minus dots minus lines. The total number of valence electrons in a free atom is what group the element is in. If an element is in group 5, there are 5 valence electrons. The number of non-bonding electrons, those are the number of dots on it. And half times the number of bonding electrons, every line is 2 bonding electrons. Every line is two bonding electrons. So half times the total number of bonding electrons will be half times two times lines, or just the number of lines. Okay, so I'm gonna actually just figure out the formal charge of all the elements in here, just so you know, so, so you can see as example. Fluorine above. Fluorine is a group seven element. You have to look on a periodic table. But fluorine, let me just find space. So fluorine is a group seven element minus how many dots on that fluorine? I see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So fluorine is group six. Oh, sorry, it has six dots around it. How many lines on a fluorine? There's one line. So seven minus six minus one, of course, is zero. The formal charge of that fluorine is zero. I'm going to write a zero above it, so I know that's formal charge is zero. I'm going to find the formal charge of the nitrogen there. Nitrogen. Nitrogen is a group five element on the periodic table. So group five. How many dots on this nitrogen? I see one, two dots, minus two dots. How many lines on that nitrogen? I count one, two, three lines, minus three. Five minus two minus three is also zero. The formal charge of the nitrogen there is also zero. So formal charge, it is just group minus dots minus lines. So well, I'll show you some more ex examples. If I find a formal charge at all the elements on here, actually, I've already done it. They're, they all just happen to be zero. If I added all these zero plus zero plus zero plus zero, of course you get zero because the total charge of this molecule is zero. In fact, the sum of the formal charge of all the atoms in a molecule or ion must equal to the charge of that molecule or ion. And since there was no charge at molecule, it should have added up to zero. Let's, let's look at two other examples. Here, this is just a given Lewis dot structure. I want to find the formal charge of every single element. Okay, let's start with carbon and oxygen. Let's start with carbon. Carbon's a group. Uh, find, find a form of charge of carbon. It's group minus dots minus lines. Here's the textbook definition. Let's start with carbon. Carbon on a periodic table, a group four element. Okay, how do you know? You have to look. It's a group four A element. Now, the next thing number of non bonding electrons. How many dots are in the carbon? Well, I can count one, two dots. You can count. There's two dots right there. Now the last thing, minus the number of lines. Uh, it says half the number of bonding electrons. How many lines on just the carbon? Not the whole molecule, just attached to carbon. I see three lines. So four minus two minus three is equal to negative one. I'm gonna put a negative one above carbon. 
Now let's look at oxygen. I'm going to find a formal charge of oxygen. Oxygen is a group six element. Group minus dots minus lines. So it's a group six elements. How many dots on just the oxygen? Two. How many lines on just the oxygen? Oh, by the way, there's those two dots for the, uh, before. How many lines on just the oxygen? There are three. One, two, three. So six minus two minus three is positive one. The formal charge oxygen is positive one. So again, another molecule. Here it is. Let's find a formal charge of carbon oxygen here. Okay, so uh, here's the full definition of it. But carbon is a group four element. How many dots on the car? How many dots? How many lines on this carbon? I don't see any dots. Let's see zero dots on the carbon, but I do see four lines. I see four lines right there. One, two, three, four on the carbon. So four minus zero minus four is equal to zero. Formal charge is zero. Oxygen's a group six element. I'm going to find a formal charge of oxygen. Oxygen's a group six element. How many dots on the oxygen? Right there. Obviously four. There they are, the four dots. How many lines in the oxygen? I see two. Those are the two. Six minus four minus two is zero. The formal charge is zero. Okay, so finding formal charges actually not that hard. You need a periodic table to figure out what group it's in, and obviously you need a correct Lewis thought structure. Make sure you have the correct Lewis thought structure. But once you have that to find formal charge, it's not that difficult. Now let's get to the reason of why in the world are we finding formal charge? So what? I can find formal charge group minus dots minus lines. Well, we use formal charge to determine something like this, okay? Well, we just found the formal charge of CH2O this way and that way. So what? Okay, now let's get to these rules about formal charges. We use formal charge to determine if there's more than one way to draw a Lewis thought structure, which is the one that nature prefers or makes, okay? And here's the rules, starting from rule number one. For neutral molecules, a Lewis structure in which there are no formal charges is preferable to one that where there are formal charges. That kind of answers our question down here. Which of the following Lewis structures is, what's the most likely structure, a Lewis structure CH2O? This is CH2O, that's CH2O. They're both CH2O. But which one is more likely to form in nature? Well, the structure in which there are no more no formal charges. The one on the right has no formal charges. Zero, zero versus negative one, positive one. So this is the one that nature makes. The one on the right. Okay, so great. Now I can, uh, so no formal charge is preferable. What about the next two rules? They are if they're not all zeros. So rule number two. Plaus uh, Lewis structures with large formal charge is less plausible than those with small formal charge. So if this said negative two, positive two, well, the smaller set of numbers, the better. Zero is the best, but smaller the set of numbers, the better. Remember, it's going to add up to zero in this case because the total charges will add up to the charge of the molecule or ion. So it's going to add up to zero. So I will not have uh, negative two and then, you know, some other numbers that... Um, and zero, because you're like, well, zero is better, but the other one says negative two, which is a big number. Well, it should add up to the same. So the set of, smaller set of numbers is better. Well, what if it's the same set of numbers? Then rule number three. Among Lewis structures having similar distributions of formal charges, the most plausible structure is the one with which the negative formal charge is placed on the more electronegative atom. So if they're the same charge, meaning, I'm just going to change this. Let's say that one said a uh, positive one. And let's say this side said negative one. Okay, it didn't. Um, but let's just say that's what it says. Well, then which structure is better? They have the same set of numbers. Well, the negative charge goes on the more electronegative atom. And so which is more electronegative, carbon or oxygen? Electronegative in negativity increases up and to the right on the periodic table. So it should be the one that's further, so oxygen's further up and to right in the periodic table. This one is the better structure. So it's still the one on the right. 
Okay, so formal charge group minus dots minus lines, we use it to figure out which is the better Lewis structure if there's more than one way to draw Lewis dot structures.